All right, good afternoon, everyone. We'll get started here in a minute. We're gonna allow, let all of our participants get into the webinar room and then we will begin. Bear with us just for a minute. Again, if you're just joining us, we're just giving everybody a few minutes to get on to the call. We'll, we will begin here shortly. All right, we will to be, to, so we can stay on time, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome to Tiger Talks. Uh, which is our first uh, Tiger Talks of the summer. My name is Josh Barnes, um, and I'll be serving as your moderator for today's session. Um, I work here in student affairs at Clemson, specifically with the orientation and family uh, programs, and so I want to welcome you uh, to Tiger Talks. Uh, today, we will be covering, um, we'll be going to, gonna, I'll, I'll be quickly providing a welcome and overview for you all. We'll introduce our campus experts. Uh, then we'll get into the substance of this Tiger Talk session, which is academic advising and course registration. We'll do Q&A sessions, and then um, we will wrap up right at six o'clock. All right, just a couple of things to, to, to kind of review with our audience members today. Um, is that today we're gonna be providing a broad and general overview of the academic advising and course registration process here at Clemson University. Um, it is important to note that for this session, uh, we will not necessarily be going over advising and registration for specific majors. Uh, this is rather, but rather we're going to be providing an overview uh, of what the advising and registration experience will look like for all of our incoming students, regardless of major. Um, so we, we hope that through this process and, and through the suggestions and resources that we're going to be providing today that will well, that will result in a very smooth um, advising and registration process for you as parents and family members, but also for our, our incoming students. This is a Zoom webinar, which means that our audience um, videos and microphones have all been muted. Um, and that's just to ensure a high quality experience for our panelists and so that everybody can hear uh, the panelists all at, um, at the same time. Uh, we do hope to be free of technical issues today, but of course with any technology, it could happen. Uh, so if we do experience technical issues, please be patient with us. Uh, we will work to resolve those um, issues as quickly as possible. Um, also want to note that this session is being recorded um, and it will be made available in our Clemson Family and Parent Experience Portal, uh, which I believe a lot of folks uh, that are joining us today are um, already in that portal and members of that portal. It'll be posted um, in there for your future reference so that you can see it throughout the whole summer. Um, it'll be in there within the next uh, few uh, business days. Today, we will have a question and answer feature. You can see um, on your toolbar, there should be a Q&A button uh, with two word bubbles um, that you can use to drop questions um, into, the, um, into the webinar for the panelists to answer. Uh, we do ask that the questions remain relevant to the topic. Again, uh, for the purpose of this session, it's about broad academic advising and course registration process and not necessarily um, about specific majors. Uh, questions related to specific majors should be answered through the resources that could be answered through the resources that we're going to be sharing today, but uh, they should also go, they should primarily go to the academic advisor of your student uh, once those academic adv advising appointments have been set, which are um, scheduled to start here in the next couple of weeks. Um, we will do our best to answer all the questions about the topic today. Um, however, in the event that we cannot get to them or have to move on for time, uh, we will follow up with you afterwards. So don't feel like if we didn't get to your question, you're out in the dark. We will follow up with you offline just to give us a couple of business days to go through them all. Of course, at any time, if you have questions, 
whether about advising or just any um, topic uh, related to being an incoming student or, or parent of an incoming student, you can always email cufamilies at clemson.edu. Again, that's cufamilies at clemson.edu. That email address will be made available at the end um, of the presentation as well. All right, so without further ado, uh, we will get right um, into our topic at hand today. Uh, but really, I want to take some time to introduce the stars of our show today, um, our academic advisors that are going to be presenting to you. Um, and so we are very fortunate to be joined today by three of our top academic advisors on campus. Um, and so at this point, I would like for them to introduce themselves. So up first is Katie. Thanks so much, Josh. Thanks for being here today, guys. Hopefully we can answer a lot of questions that you have. My name's Katie Black, and I have been advising here at Clemson for 17 years. All right, Kristen. Hi, everybody. My name is Kristen Goodnow, and this is my 21st orientation uh, as an academic advisor at Clemson, and I even have one orientation as a student under my belt. Hi, everyone. Oh, sorry. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Jessica Owens, and my pronouns are she, her, hers, and um, I am, I'm the baby of the group. I have been working in orientation and advising for only eight years. So really excited to be in the, the presence of, um, of these wonderful advising colleagues tonight. All right. And with that, um, Kristen, I will turn it over to you. All right. Thanks, Josh. So um, as we said, thanks everybody for joining us. Um, what I'm going to do is set the stage a little bit uh, for what Jessica and Katie are going to talk about. So uh, just hang with me. Um, but if y'all are like me, I love a good analogy. Um, so Josh, if you don't mind going to slide number one, we're going to get started. And also keep your phones out uh, because my part is going to have some interaction to it as well. Um, so first slide random picture of a house. Uh, and hopefully no one recognizes where this house is actually located. Um, because what we're gonna do today is take a virtual journey um, together to this house. Uh, so we are going to go on a road trip. Um, so hopefully no one is from Marshall, Minnesota. Uh, I'm from the Midwest, so there's lots of places that people have never heard of and have never used uh, a car to get there. Um, but what we're going to do over the next few minutes is take a virtual road trip uh, and then connect it to the academic road trip uh, that your students are going to be starting in a few weeks. There's no, I will just say there's no airport in Marshall, Minnesota, so we are going to have to drive. Um, so Josh, if you want to put up the next screen, um, I want everybody to scan the QR code and you'll be able to put in words. Um, so you can just use your phone to scan the QR code. Um, but what can we use to help us all get to Marshall, Minnesota? So what are the, what are the things that you would use to get to Marshall, Minnesota? You have no idea where we're going. So give people a couple of minutes to, to put those in. I hope whoever said bike lives in Minnesota. Um, if not, you must really like biking. So, of course, as you all know, um, you know, the, the bigger words are, are larger answers. So I will just say, you know, plane, probably not going to be able to get to Marshall, Minnesota that way, um, but maybe part of the way. Somebody who puts someone who has been, I, I will be honest, I have a relative who lives in the South and I honestly could not give you directions um, to get to Marshall, Minnesota or to this house. Um, I might be able to, you know, to point you in the right direction, but all right, so lots of good answers. Um, probably the two main things um, that would be needed would be either GPS most of us have a phone, has GPS on it, um, so we can type in Marshall, Minnesota from wherever we are uh, or go to Google Maps, um, and it will get us to Marshall, Minnesota. Um, it, for some of us, again, I don't know where everybody is, um, is from, but it probably is going to take a couple of days. Um, so I see a lot of other answers on here that are important as well. Uh, even if we go out and get in the car today, you're probably going to maybe 
pack a bag, um, throw a few things in, probably going to take more than one day, um, maybe some snacks, maybe, uh, you know, gas money, um, get gas along the way. So, you know, even just a simple trip for us all to imagine going to this place we have never been to uh, is going to take several steps and many, many resources for us to get there. Um, so Josh, if you'll go to the next side, slide, sorry. So again, very much like get uh, students going off to college. Um, there's going to be a roadmap, there's going to be instructions, there's going to be rules and regulations. Um, and probably many of you parents and, and your students have been planning for this moment for a long time. Uh, and so you've, you've been gathering those resources and now it's time to, you know, no pun intended, rubber to the road um, and get out there and, and, and start on the journey. Um, advisors, um, other faculty and staff on campus, we are here to help. Um, but it also is a time where students are going to need to begin to make some decisions um, with the information available and provide it to them. So that's one of the pieces uh, that we're hopefully going to answer through our presentation today. So next slide, Josh. So I know that um, you guys did not join this session to come on a fake road trip to Marshall, Minnesota with me. Um, so, you know, what is the destination uh, for your students here at Clemson? Well, that's graduation. So take a moment to scan and just put in what tools you think your student is gonna need to be successful in college and really what they're gonna need to get to that ultimate academic destination, which is graduation. And hopefully that's something that all of you are looking at. All right, computer. Yeah, unfortunately, live and die with my computer. It's with me a lot. Um, so, you know, interesting mix of some of these things are actual hardware like the computer, but other things like time management and determination, um, perseverance, those, those aren't hard things that you can hold on to. Those, those are skills and abilities um, that they've learned up to this point. So that's, you know, part of what we're going to talk about today. The road trip to graduation is fairly complex. Um, there's not any one thing or any one advisor or person who is going to be able to kind of help your students to navigate everything that's going to need to be accomplished to get to graduation. Uh, and definitely um, a lot of the things that are uh, internal skills, uh, like time management determination, uh, are definitely not things that advisors or even faculty uh, can, can help your student uh, to have or um, we can help students to hone those skills, um, but we definitely are not going to be able to give them the determination to do, get it done. All right, so next slide, please. So just to close out the analogy, I want all of you as parents to think about the first time that your student took the keys to the car uh, and drove off by themselves somewhere. I'm sure you had many different emotions. I did not put this up as a word cloud, um, but as they are driving off, um, some of you may have been excited. Uh, they may, you may have been nervous, um, but probably before your student got in at that car and drove, drove away by themselves, they had had many test runs. You had gone out driving with them. They had read the rules and regulations of the road. Pretty sure most uh, folks have to take and pass an exam to get a driver's license. Um, so again, much like this academic road trip, you just don't show up to college and know everything. Um, there's going to be a learning curve uh, and there's going to be some, some steps to, to take prior to getting behind um, the wheel of the car, so to speak, and, and going. Um, the other thing is, uh, you probably, when you were giving those driver, driving lessons, did not reach over and grab the steering wheel. That probably would not have ended so positively. Um, you know, you may have pressed the fake uh, brake pedal on the passenger side of the car a little bit, um, but uh, 
there are certain things that you knew if you did, it would not end the driving lesson well. Um, so again, college is your student's opportunity to start to take the wheel for themselves. Um, and it is not going to be perfect, um, but you, know, you learn how to be a better driver. You learn how to be a better student um, as you begin uh, to, to do some of these things on your own. But luckily, having said all of this, and I'm gonna turn it over to Katie next, Clemson has the resources to help support your student. Um, so that's the bottom line. All of the resources they are gonna need um, to, to help on this academic road trip, Clemson provides tutoring, we provide advising, we provide coaching, career advice. Uh, all of these services are available on our campus. And so there should not be any reason why students um, do not feel supported uh, or do not feel like they have the opportunity to get the questions answered that they need. So in the next couple of slides, uh, we're gonna talk about those specifics. So I am going to turn it over to Katie. Okay. Actually, I think Jessica next. So Jake, Josh, if you want to click to that next slide. <laughs> so actually, it's going to be me. No big deal. I, if it had been Katie, it would have been great too. Um, so I'm going to just talk a little bit big picture about advising structure at Clemson, because I'm sure um, you all have noticed at this point that it, it looks a little different depending on where your student is located. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit about responsibilities um, within the advising process. So, so big picture, it's really decentralized at Clemson. So while we do have some processes that happen at a higher level, for the most part, you're going to see a lot of variation from college to college and even from department to department in terms of what the steps of that advising process looks like, who that advisor is going to be, and what other roles that they might have. Um, we're not able to be one-stop shops and we really shouldn't be. Um, and so, you know, we have a, a lot of knowledge, but we also have a lot of knowledge about kind of the, the referrals that are gonna be appropriate for your students. And so we are gonna make referrals throughout the process. And, and really we, we hope you can help your students to see that as an opportunity to add another person to their support system rather than another stop they have to take. Um, because, you know, for example, I, I joke with students all the time, I know enough about scholarships to be dangerous and to know why it's important to talk to the Office of Scholarships and the Office of Financial Aid at Clemson because I don't know enough to be very explicit. Um, and so those referrals are sometimes necessary. Um, as I kind of alluded to earlier, advising load and roles are gonna vary from person to person. And so, you know, when, um, when action is requested of your student, we really want to see those students following those instructions and those timelines um, because we may not be able to have an immediate response to a question via email or appointment availability immediately depending on what those loads are looking like. Um, so finally, and this is a big piece, you know, our goal as advisors, and we'll talk to you this, about this a little bit more as we get into your questions, um, is to help students help themselves. So instead of giving them the answer, helping them to see where we find the answer. So if I have a student who wants to know, you know, how a particular policy might impact their GPA, I'm going to show them a GPA calculator and I'm going to walk through them with that. So that way they'll have access to it when I'm not available. And I apologize. I have a 10 month old and we're rocking through it. Um, so uh, Josh, if you could move to the next slide, that would be great. All right. So this is where we start to get into student responsibilities. And, and as I kind of alluded to a minute ago, we really want students to take an active role in the advising relationship. And so we want to see them seeking assistance from their assigned academic advisor if they want to adjust their academic program. Um, a lot of times students will sometimes, you know, make assumptions about what steps they need to take. An advisor can really walk them through what that process is going to look like and what resources they might want to access. Um, but we can't read their minds and know that they want to change their major or their academic program. And so we need to hear that from them so we can best set them up for success. Um, scheduling appointments with their assigned advisor prior to registration. And as you all have already noticed, you know, that that communication timeline is going to look a little different depending on what types of um, advising loads folks have. Some advisors have 10 or 15 students. And so, you know, they may wait until much closer to registration to initiate that pre-registration advising process. Others might have a couple hundred students that they're trying to meet. And so, you know, 
if you're with my team, you're going to hear from us really early in the semester um, because we want to make sure every student has the opportunity to meet with an advisor. Um, preparing for those appointments and reviewing the relevant resources. And that looks a little different depending on the student and their program, um, but taking some time to think about what do they want that next semester to look like so that they can have a conversation with their advisor about what to take rather than um, that advisor telling them what to take. Um, and then finally on this slide, you know, just kind of engaging in that active dialogue, following through on those next steps that are identified in each advising appointment and being really open and honest. I tell my students all the time, you know, if there's something that I'm recommending to you that you just are having a gut negative or positive reaction to, let me know because I wanna set you up for success. And if there's something on this list that you feel like doesn't set you up for success. I need to hear that. Um, and then we can talk through why it may or may not be appropriate to adjust that plan. Um, okay, next slide. Thanks, Josh. Okay, um, so this is important too. So students, as I referenced earlier, have access to a lot of the resources that we have access to as advisors. And so, you know, we want them to maintain knowledge of those degree requirements, the policies, the procedures, and all the technologies that are relevant to their educational goals. So as advisors, we're gonna help them navigate those things, but we also want them to have access to them and awareness of them. Um, this next bullet point is specifically referring to their academic standing, um, which is referring to, you know, if they find themselves on academic probation and knowing, you know, what do they need to achieve to avoid those consequences of suspension or dismissal or even, you know, worse permanent dismissal, you know, making sure that students are fully aware of what that academic standing is. And if they have questions, have them um, reach out to directly UGS eligibility and ask, you know, I, I don't fully understand where I'm sitting right now. Can you help me to understand? Their advisor is also a good resource for that too. Um, and then these last two points, you know, maintaining knowledge of what are those important dates and deadlines on the academic calendar. Um, when we think about, you know, beyond just when classes start, but also like when is the last day to withdraw? When is, you know, the last day to add a class? Those are really important things for students to be aware of. Um, and then finally, you know, accepting final responsibility for all their decisions. And that's not just, you know, about the classes that they choose to register for ultimately, but also about any, um, anything related to the scholarships they receive. And, and, you know, this final point kind of clarify something I mentioned earlier about, you know, we cannot advise relating to the scholarship requirements because they're so specific sorry, to each student um, that it's, it's difficult for an advisor to know all of those ins and outs of the different scholarships and financial aid packages that you might have access to. He really wants to be a part of this conversation, y'all. Okay, wave. Just wave. Okay. And I think that's all of my slides. So I'm going to pass it, I think, to Katie now. <laughs> I'll take the heat off you, Jessica. <laughs> Get Ari happy. So Jessica talked a lot about using the resources and being familiar with the resources. So we want to be sure that you know what those resources are. Um, and there might even be a couple we left off of here that I've already taken note to be sure to point out to you. IROR is a big resource. And at the end of this week, students who are coming to Clemson will be loaded into the system. So after, at the end of this week or early next week, students will have access to IROR. At the moment, they do not. So I know I've had a lot of emails myself. I don't see what I need to see there. It will be there very soon for all of you, but IROR is a great tool. It's what all of us use on our side. It has a couple of things within it that are very important. DegreeWorks is the auditing tool that we use. So not necessarily for our undeclared students, but for students assigned to a major, it takes into account any dual enrollment, AP credit, applies it to the course that it matches with and allows us to audit and see what remains within the degree. So this is a very helpful tool and something that especially before the advising appointment, whether it be for virtual orientation or a regular advising appointment, the student should go through. Every student has a profile within IROR. It's what we view on the advisor end to tell us a lot of things about the student. Usually I'll look at that right before I meet with a student to review a couple of things on there that I need to know. Um, especially when it comes to any holds that might be on their record for a continued Student transcript is really, really important. Again, if any credit is earned coming in from high school or from your community college, those things will be on that transcript if we have them. 
if you are anticipating credit and it's not there, and again, I know there's a lot of questions coming in the chat about the things that are coming. Obviously, we, we can't have anything in there until it's final to be on the transcript. So we'll talk about those things a little bit more. See You Navigate is the appointment tool that we use for making that appointment with your advisor. All of your students will receive a campaign from us as advisors initiating that. So there's nothing that they should be doing at this point to find that appointment. We will initiate that. That will come to their clemson.edu email address. And at that point, then they can go to a specialized link that allows them to register for that specific campaign based on the date of their orientation. So again, just be watching that email address. It's coming. The academic catalog is, it's the roadmap. It is the rules and regulations that Kristen was talking about. It is so important. And every catalog that's printed and the catalog that a student comes in, it is your contract. It is your contract to your academic degree to Clemson. And we will always be referencing that academic catalog. It's out there public on the web. The new one for 2021 is out there. Go take a look, start reviewing that. Start looking at some of those policies and procedures. It is an extremely important document that we refer to often. Um, I've mentioned it already, and I don't know that I can I scream it from the rooftops loud enough. Your, your student's clemson.edu email address is so important. And, and this is one of the things I talk to students a lot about is how to manage email. We all get a lot of email. Students get a ton, us as advisors get a ton. And managing your email and utilizing um, different things that help you to see the top priority emails that are coming through. Because again, Clemson will send a lot of emails to your student. So helping them see what's important in that email address. All communication from advisors will come through that email address. Uh, Canvas is an important tool, but not for advising. Canvas is utilized for classes and classwork only. And a lot of times um, there's grade reports in there. However, IROR is where all official grades, final grades are reported in IROR. Um, all of your progress is in IROR. So in terms of academic progress and, and the advising piece, IROR is our tool. Canvas is very much a course tool. So you'll hear Canvas as you go through the next couple of steps, um, but it is definitely a course tool. Uh, and the last academic resource, all of our incoming students have to register for CU 1000. And it is specifically structured to give your students all of the tools that they really need as they're entering Clemson to be, um, to be knowledgeable about everything Clemson they need to know. And it is a class that they will register for. It is zero credits, but it is pass fail. I always hate to see a student fail it. Um, but it is very important to go through those things and to take it seriously because they are kind of the check marks to say that you know how to do these things. So it, it will happen when you enroll in Clemson and help kind of make those next couple of steps. Next slide, Josh. So we really wanted to talk a little bit about what you all can do to be supportive right now as we prepare for orientation. And then my next slide is gonna be talking about what you can do to help your student through the journey. So what can you do to be helpful prior to orientation? Uh, your students have a virtual orientation platform and there is a guest login for that. You don't have to go through your student's portal. You can go and make your own guest login to that virtual orientation platform. And I actually really recommend sit down with your student and watch the videos together. Um, when I created my video for orientation, I told students, stop right now, get a pen and paper, get your phone, be prepared to pause, rewatch the video, ask questions, write down the notes you have. Um, there's a lot of attempt to you know, kind of rush through it and get to the next step, but these are really important videos with a lot of information packed in. And we expect you to have watched it, your student to have watched these videos before we meet with them and have all of those things already as knowledge so that when we meet, we can really hit the ground running with all of the things specific to their academics. So sit down with your student and watch those modules. Help them know what those tools are and, and get on clemson.edu and search for the tools with them. Search, I really, I, a lot of times I say, I'm really just a, a really good at Google. I know how to search Clemson's web really well. So just search Clemson's web for some of these answers. And you'll see that really as advisors, we don't have a whole lot of exclusive knowledge. Most of the things we share are very accessible to everybody via the catalog in clemson.edu. Um, but sit down and write down those questions, help answer those questions using the tools, and then be sure that the questions they are coming to their advising appointment with are really points of clarification rather than okay, what am I going to take in the fall? You know, that really being an active participant in the advising process is so important. I love when I talk to a student and I can tell that they're prepared for their advising appointment. Um, when it comes to the virtual orientation advising appointment, 
please let your student be at that advising appointment by themselves. Again, hopefully you've prepared them all the way that you can set them off and let them have that experience driving the car all by themselves for the first time. And again, from our perspective, we have a lot of students to get through orientation this summer. We would love to have hour long conversations with you. We just don't have the capacity for it. So we wanna try and get, that, get those questions answered, get them what they need um, within those advising appointments. And then registration as well, absolutely needs to be just the student. That is a very um, kind of time sensitive process. And we as advisors are gonna do everything we can to take care of those students, but we really do need it to just be the student. And again, please be sure to help your students set realistic expectations. Um, they may have an eight o'clock class. They may have to take the professor they don't want to take. Helping them to understand that they will get what they need from Clemson, but having realistic expectations that, you know, they might not have that specific class or that specific professor freshman year at 10, 10 a.m. instead of 8 a.m. They may have to flex and work with what's available. Um, these are these last few points are really important. Don't panic and trust the process. Uh, as Kristen and Jessica and I have all said, we've done this a lot and for many years. And it always works. And I know that sometimes in the advising session or in registration, things might not go exactly as we want, and it might not be perfect when we leave. But by the time we get students here for the fall, we're able to make everything work. So just trust us, just work with us. I promise we'll help it help it make, make it all happen. All right, next slide, Josh. And so then after we get out of orientation and moving forward, Really at that point, your student is gonna meet with us. Hopefully we all of those appointments in the future are always in our office and we're not doing virtual appointments ever again. Um, so really it's, you're not gonna be able to be there with your student to ask those questions. So again, preparing them for virtual orientation is just preparing them for down the road. But ask your student questions, ask them a lot of questions. Make sure that you are helping them feel like they are doing the right thing when they're in the meetings with us so that they're ready um, for those next steps. Be a backseat driver, right? I, I'm the the guilty wife who screams at my husband sometimes, and that's not always best when I see something happening. You know, be that backseat driver who calmly says, you know, hey, did you see that car about to pull out? Um, and again, this one is one that I specifically added because of an experience I had this week. Be sure you're a soft place to land. Um, students are going through a lot entering college or continuing in college as transfer students, and especially transitioning to Clemson. If they stumble, yeah, you know, be sure to be a soft place to land for them and help them refocus on the positive. A student I had this week was really struggling to go to her parents and tell them that she had decided she didn't want to be in this major in this career path anymore. And it's one of those career paths that she kind of committed to at five years old. And she was disappointed in herself. Um, her father is actually in the same career and she knew how disappointed he would be. And that's hard. That's a really hard conversation to have. And that student just needed a supportive environment outside of just advising to make those next steps. Um, and then again, realizing that you are not in control, we are not in control of everything and focusing in on the things that you can impact and can control rather than all of those exterior things that cannot be controlled. All right, Josh, I think that's the end of my part of the presentation. I know we've got tons of questions coming in the chat. Good night. Can I just real quick answer one of the live questions that I think yeah. went away, um, but I thought was such an interesting question and um, Jessica may have typed an answer, um, but it was about what advisors are going to do for your students. Um, and of course I am super biased, um, but I think one of the misconceptions with advising is that we just show up to the appointment and chat with students. Um, my team in particular has been working for months. Um, the virtual orientation sessions that you all have been watching, we did those back in April. Um, we've been working on documents. We've been working on updating all of the handouts that are in the virtual orientation sessions. Um, I cannot wait for Friday uh, when students are in the system because I likely, um, we, we spend a lot of time doing a lot of pre-work. Um, the questions that they ask in that virtual orientation platform about AP credit, IB credit, um, dual enrollment credit, we are looking at that. Um, I am looking at what my students want to do for a career if they put that into the system, because that too, you know, can, can really make a difference in what they take or what they want to do in the fall semester. Um, so I know a lot of times it, it's, it's unseen. Um, but I would also say that advisors are constantly um, 
you know, sharing information, sharing resources, um, you know, working on developing our own professional uh, selves, making sure we know what we talk about. And I think a lot of the questions in the chat have been about, um, you know, how do we know who our advisor is? And I know that can seem super frustrating um, to you all on the backside as parents, um, but it's a very intimate relationship. We just don't throw, throw the student to anyone. Um, you know, they're gonna come to my major and that's all I do. I do one major and I do it very well. Um, and I'm in a college with some other majors and I, I can advise those majors as well. We try and, you know, cross, cross train um, but that's why it's not uncommon if a student says, oh, I, I want a totally different major, we may have to send you to another expert. Um, and I know that can be frustrating too with the one-stop shop, but we are trying our hardest to know everything we possibly can about the major or majors that we serve um, so that we can make sure the information we're sharing is, is spot on. So, sorry, on the all right. Thank you, Kristen. Thanks, Katie. Thanks, Jessica, for that information. Um, obviously, we do have some some questions. We we did provide uh, the audience an opportunity to submit questions in advance, and I think you all may have some answers to those. And we'll start there first. So I think a lot of the questions that I saw come in in advance are some of the same questions I'm seeing coming in in the chat, and I know a lot of it right now is kind of about that credit already earned. AP credit, IB credit, dual enrollment, transfer students bringing credit. And as an advisor, the only thing I'm going to see when I pull your student up is credit that is already here and available at Clemson. So if it's credit that they have earned, it needs to get sent. If it's credit that they're earning very soon, have not quite finished a dual enrollment class, get that official transcript sent from the institution as soon as possible. It cannot come from the high school. It has to come from the institution awarding the credit. AP credit, IB credit, if those things are, again, they've already taken and they know their score, get that sent on to Clemson. But for a lot of students, most of our orientation sessions will occur during the time that we won't have access to that credit, right? So that's a conversation that depending on the credit and the course, we're gonna have a conversation with your student, again, depending on the course and the major, to talk to them about, you know, how do you feel about the, the class? Is it something you felt like you did really well in? Do you think you made a five? Are you questioning it? But again, if it's a class that's a prereq to go to the next step, we may not infer credit. So it really just depends on the major, the credit, the comfort level. Um, so it, it really is a one of those, I can't give you a straight answer on what we'll do, it's a conversation. And really it's those building block courses, the science and the math, and sometimes the English things that we can't move on with. Um, you know, social science or a general education, great, we get to check the box, but it might not be something that we um, are moving on to the next level in. And I was just uh, going to add, uh, and I think Josh said it, but just to underscore, there were a few questions in the Q&A um, that we're not going to be able to answer. Uh, so we are gonna get those to Josh uh, and he definitely uh, will follow up. That will be one of the next couple of days follow up. Yes, just as a reminder, we will um, follow up with questions and may not be necessarily related to the topic on hand here. We'll follow up with you all. Um, I'll turn it over to our panelists for the Q and A's that are coming into the box here. Maybe we can go through some of those um, and answer those out loud. Mm -hmm. um, and Josh, I was gonna maybe say this might be a good time to go to the website and do sure. some searching um, because I know there were some questions about how do I get to the placement tabs? Uh, and I think Katie said it, Jessica probably said it. Um, we're just fancy Googlers. Um, and so if you go to clemson.edu uh, and you click on that search button uh, and type in Clemson Math Placement Test, I guess you don't need to do the Clemson since we're on clemson.edu. Thanks, Josh. <laughs> um, you know, and probably any one of these first couple of, of I would say the second uh, one is going to get you to the, uh, well, this is for engineering and science, um, but the checklist for new students that are coming in, it's, it's probably on here, Josh, if you just want to scoot down. Um, yeah, 
So if we just click on that test information, you don't even need to be in the College of Engineering and Science, um, but that takes you right to the info about um, the test, transfer credit, uh, the go to Alex is another name for it. That's where you go to actually take the test. Um, you know, and again, so any of these, uh, these uh, clicks at the top will probably answer the majority of your questions. Um, yeah, Josh, if you don't mind going back to the search engine and we will, um, I think the catalog is another main resource. Um, and, and, and I recommend anytime I Google something like this and I know I'm gonna need it, bookmarked. Um, you know, so I think that's a piece as well. Um, so all of our catalogs are housed online. Um, yeah, I think you have to, yeah, to click on the academic catalog system there. Uh, and in the upper right-hand corner, where it says Columbus University Catalog System, uh, that is a pull-down menu. Um, and so if your student is an incoming freshman, they will be on the 2021-2022 catalog. Um, transfer students may be on a, an earlier catalog year, um, but for most majors, um, your advisor can tell you if there is a need to be on an early catalog year. For my majors, I don't think anything's changed in the last five years. Um, but from this main screen, you can go into specific uh, colleges. Um, if you don't mind, Josh, clicking on admissions. Say that again, I'm sorry. Left hand side, sorry. It's hard to tell someone else to drive. <laughs> I'm like pointing like you can see that, yes. Um, so if you scroll through this, uh, this should be the section where um, AP and IB uh, credits are going to be listed. Um, so, you know, academic policies are here, uh, questions about what's in my student's curriculum, then you navigate to the major. Um, so the catalog probably contains a lot of what it is you're looking for. Here's some information about transfer credits. I know we've had a lot of information or questions about that. So if you were to click on the visit the transfer course equivalency list at in the end of that last paragraph, that would take you to the um, equivalency list. Oh, oh there's a typo. Well, this isn't good. Um, oh, it's I think it's putting the period on the end of that. Sorry. Um, but someone had asked if the credits are not in the T cell, uh, if those need to be evaluated, that is completed by admissions once the transcripts are, are received. Um, so academic advisors are not the folks that are evaluating those credits, but um, it is very important for your student to tell their advisor what they may be anticipating credit for. Um, again, we worked in the biz for a while, so if a student's like, well, it's not evaluated, but I took this public speaking class, probably going to guess, you know, we're going to stay away from taking the public speaking class at Clemson, because many things can be interchanged. Uh, when you're looking at the catalog and looking at the curriculum, it is in no way going to need to be taken exactly as it's laid out. Um, there are very few majors uh, or students that finish and take it exactly like that. So, yeah, so if you keep scrolling, that's where AP and IB uh, is in there. I think we had some questions about that. So again, it's the test, the score, and then what you would receive credit for. And again, that will help you get a good start on that. Um, and I heard Katie saying, you know, for some majors, for some situations, um, you know, there may be some advising you to retake the course um, for certain situations. So again, your advisor would, would raise that uh, with you, or if you wanted to retake it, if the student wanted to retake it. So I made a mistake in the chat. I was trying to answer one of the questions and I said I'd answer it live and then it went away and I didn't answer it live. So let me answer it live real quick. One of the questions was about um, that your student applied this year as test optional. Do they need to take the placement test? Sorry, I, I dismissed it. That was not my intent. Yes. So if your student applied as test optional, um, we do need some of the scores from that SAT or ACT to place them specifically into math. So with that, you have two options. 
you can send the SAT or ACT score that does exist for your student if you feel like it is going to be strong enough. And again, on that math, you can find what the score needs to be to satisfy the math. Um, so you can send that SAT or ACT score now and we can get it in the system and be official and that will work as placement. If not, they need to take the math placement test or if the score is not strong enough to place them into the math that they would need or assess them for the math they need, that math placement test is necessary. We must have math placement to place them into a math course. Otherwise, they go into the very lowest bottom remedial math course that Clemson has. So I'm sorry that I did that in the, I was trying to go through all these questions over here and make sure I'm answering. I think one question that keeps coming up too is just like when do folks have access to registration and so the the period that your students signed up for as their orientation session that's when they will have access to registration and so it's a really short window as part of orientation that they have access because we are moving students through and, and there was a question I answered in the chat too about um courses filling up. And so this is one of the ways that we help to save seats for students in later sessions and make sure that there's more equitable access to those seats that are released as the summer goes on as you'll have access for that um, for that short period on that day. And um, so I believe it's like 45 minutes to an hour and a half. Um, Y'all jump in. I can't remember the exact time frame um, for that day, but then all registration will open again on July 26th at 8 a.m. And that's for all students who have gone through orientation at that point, as well as all of our continuing students who have been blocked from registration while your students are going through orientation this summer. So you don't need to check daily, but you know that July 26th date is a great date to take a look at if there were any things that the student was unhappy with with their schedule when they left orientation, they could look at switching out. But I will share too, just as a general rule of thumb, we as advisors are going to make sure that your students leave that registration window with a schedule of courses that will help them make progress toward degree. It may not be the absolute ideal schedule from like a timing standpoint, or maybe they're taking, you know, Psych 2010 instead of Soch 2010. Um, but they are going to be taking courses that will help them make progress toward their intended degree. So that is one thing that you'll know that your student is leaving with. And I'll just answer live a question about the different parts, and it is very confusing. Um, so what your student signed up for, um, or hopefully it's signed up for so far, is the orientation registration date. That is where students will sit down at a computer with, with their advisor and they will actually register for classes. So much like the advising process, you don't just walk into that, that meeting and be like, I know what I'm doing. Um, so that's where the online uh, virtual models is has been put out there by each department to help share what your student needs to know. Um, so this is general information that applies to everyone in that major, important information. Um, again, and Josh may be able to speak more to this, but there, there are other pieces of information like how do you see you navigate, how to use IROAR. Um, so again, we are anticipating that students um, review all of the modules out there. You mentioned it's due by 815, but if your student's registration date, they are, they are all before 815. Um, so they will need to be through the academic piece prior, I would say, at least two weeks before their registration date. Um, because what then happens is once advisors uh, know a student has viewed these online modules, that's when we're going to set up the one-on-one -on -one Zoom advising sessions to talk to your students specifically about their situation prior to the registration date that you signed up for in May. And so again, this is why I can't say you definitely will have instructions out there because every advisor gets to do that part differently. Um, there should be instructions, but there may be advisors who are just looking at, okay, Kristen completed the module, now I'm going to email her. And that information may not be in there. Um, but I would say the key thing is that your students need to watch the virtual academic 
modules online as soon as possible, especially if they are in these early orientation sessions, um, because we have to then reach out to them to make an appointment and get them advised really, you know, in the next two weeks. Um, so it's not a process where you can watch the modules June 2nd and register on June 3rd. Definitely not. Hopefully that helped. Three I'll start you with scheduling those advising appointments, there will likely be in those communications like this, the appointment needs to be scheduled by a certain day and time and that's to ensure that the student has that appointment has a good plan prior to that registration window. So uh, Katie mentioned this earlier, but really encouraging your students to, to stay on top of their Clemson email this summer, not just for advising and registration things, but also for all things that are a part of their exciting entrance into the university. So um, definitely an important resource for them. All right. Are there any other, uh, and, and I'm on my end, I, I'm in present mode, of course, uh, for this webinar, and I, I can't see the Q&A, so I rely on our panelists here. Are there any other ones that um, we need to, to review? I would just say, you know, there's been a lot of, of questions about the placement exams. Um, And just, I would definitely, for the math, go back to that view AP uh, and transfer and IB work to help. There's a decision tree on there that can help you to decide. And along that line in the parent portal and the orientation and the parent and family orientation community, uh, there will be information that will be dropped this week, um, specifically about placement exams. Uh, with the links to those AP and IB credit review processes that Kristen has um, just talked about there. So that's coming. So be sure to check that at parent portal. There'll be a post in there that's uh, supposed to go out, that's scheduled to go out on Friday morning. All right, any, are there any other questions for our panelists? I know. A lot of, lot of different questions, feeling a little scattered at this point, but I would say, you know, ultimately that's kind of the hard piece of this is it's like putting a puzzle together. You know me, I like my analogies here, folks. Um, and, you know, you don't always have all the pieces right now in this moment. Um, and so that's a very hard thing and we absolutely know it. Um, but I think the big things, and I know Katie mentioned these almost all on her slides, you know, don't panic. Someone is going to reach out to you um, and, you know, trust the process. We have done this before. Again, most all advisors have dealt with the AP scores come in after orientation. This is not a new thing. Um, and so we're used to answering these questions. Um, we have answers to these questions. Um, and so, you know, just know that it's not a new process um, and it may be new, you know, for you and your student and, and we definitely hear that and understand that. Um, but yeah, it, it is kind of a patience testing process um, because it, it will be more of a marathon to, to get to the final fall schedule for some students. All right, thank you, Kristen. Any other questions you'd like to hit on? Yeah, you're Jessica. So the last question that came in was about, um, sorry, about language and English placement tests. Um, so with the majors I work with, none of our majors require a foreign language, but I still advise students that if you took a foreign language, Go ahead and take that foreign language placement test. You're never going to know more Spanish, German, French than you know right now. So go ahead and take it. Get your placement. If you later change your major, decide you want to minor in it, want to just pick up a course, it's there. And so it's better to go ahead and have it now. There is no English placement. 
So no, no need for that. But for foreign language placement, I'd still recommend it for my students. With, with the number of students that change their minds, um, it's always nice to have it on board. Yeah, and I just want to share um, from the perspective of some of the questions not getting answered. Um, it is on this side, they're just like a little bit overwhelming. So I apologize if any of your questions have not been answered. Um, it looks like Katie, you're typing an answer to the question that just got reposed. Um, I think Josh mentioned earlier, but we'll definitely take a look at all the cues um, and make sure that they were answered. And if not, Josh is going to work with us to get those answers out to all of the attendees and follow up to this session. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, I would just share with you all from an advising perspective, you know, this summer in virtual orientation, um, it's not like it would have normally been had we all been able to be in person. And, and I think Kristen, and Katie have both alluded to it, like we miss working with our students in our offices and the, the technical difficulties and things like that are also things that um, we are challenged by. Um, but I, I, as an advisor, am really proud of how the advising community has kind of like come together and created these virtual modules and, you know, figured out how to use Zoom to manage appointments and all of that. And so, you know, we just, we appreciate your patience and understanding as we also navigate something that we've never navigated navigated before um, and trying to ensure a quality experience for, for your students, um, because that's what we care about. We want to make sure, you know, that they feel set up for success entering Clemson this upcoming year, um, but also be managing our own capacity to make sure we can provide that experience for all the students assigned to us. And so sometimes we might say, that's a great question, but it's a great question for whenever we meet in the fall semester. Let's talk about it more then. And so if if you hear your students sharing maybe some frustration in response to some of that, please know that it's coming from a place of ensuring that all students have equitable access to their advisors for the questions they need answered this summer to have what they need set up for success this upcoming year, and that we will absolutely be connected to them um, following orientation too, and a resource for them at that point for those bigger picture plans, you know, multiple semesters out, double majors, minors, all the things that your student might want to add as part of their experience, there will be time for that. Um, so thank you in advance for being our partners this summer. One last question. That was a great summation, Jessica, and I should just let it end, but I do want to answer the question somebody was asking, you know, about the, again, the math placement is a big question here. If you truly feel that the AP, or excuse me, the um, SAT or ACT was a true evaluation of your students' math skills, but even though it may give you the credit, it may still not be a true evaluation. The Clemson math placement test is the best way to assess how you will perform in Clemson math. The math department has perfected this test. It has improved and improved over the years and it is the best way to determine what math you most appropriately should go into. I personally did a lot better on SAT math than I am truly a math, math student. So I probably should not have used my math SAT. So again, I think it's the best assessment um, of how that student will do in Clemson math. All right, thank you, Katie. Um, I hope um, as we Take the next couple of minutes to wrap up our uh, Tiger Talk session here. I uh, just want to thank you, uh, Katie, Kristen, and Jessica, for taking the time to present today to our audience and parents and family members of our incoming students. And for those who didn't get those questions uh, answered today, please know that we will respond to you. Uh, we will get back with you um, by submitting a question. We do have record uh, contact information, so we're able to, to, to reach out to you directly. And of course, we will uh, uh, be, we'll follow up here in the next few days to get you the answers that you need. Our team is here to help. This is part of the orientation process. We know you have questions and we're here to help and we'll do our best to, to get those answers uh, to you in a, in a timely fashion. Uh, the recording, just as a reminder, the recording will be available um, on our parent portal within the next two to three business days. So you can go back and um, review this information. We know it's a lot. Um, our next Tiger Talk, if you haven't already registered, is on May, is next week on May 27th. Uh, we'll be, discussing student health and well-being resources. So you'll be hearing from campus experts on from student health services, counseling and psychological services, um, healthy campus and advocacy is success. It'll be a great session and hope you all uh, can join us. Of course, at any time over the summer, you are always welcome to reach out to us directly at cufamilies at clemson.edu. Uh, that is the best contact uh, um, email address for you to get your questions answered if you have them. Um, and again, I wanna thank you all for attending. 
And um, we hope to see you next week. Um, and until next time, go Tigers. Thanks for coming.